Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Huge Slugs, I'm Harrison. Uh, my name is Mike. And joining me today is one of my bazillion cousins, Brian. Brian, say hello. Hey guys, what's going on? Brian, uh, let's not let's uh, let's cut to the chase. Why are, why are you here joining us for the first time on Huge Slugs? Mm. Well, I have the privilege and honor of sharing with the world that I am one of the top 10 Donkey Kong Country 2 players in the world, well, at least 20 years ago, but I want to rekindle the magic and share some stories with uh, the honor of what I did. Right. <laughs> very, so, this is very exciting. I'm very excited. I was thinking about this all day. So I Brian, very <laughs> hyped. Why don't you start the game and I'll give a little backstory. Um, Brian, when he was a youngster, it was 1996. You were how old? Maybe... 12, 11? Yeah, I was about 10 or 11 years old. 10 or 11. Uh, Nintendo Power issued a challenge. They said, what's your fastest time beating Donkey Kong Country 2 getting 102%? That means getting every single collectible in the game. So Hard. You Very. saw this challenge and you're like, I can do this. Yeah, well, I had played the game about the game. 30 times. And <laughs> the challenge came up. I'm like, oh, I could do that. I'll just keep playing and you know, trim even more time off my best time. So... Here we go. So how long did it, how many times did you play it knowing that you were specifically playing it to get a good time for this challenge? I'd say like about you, three times. Three times. Because so you, I knew the game like the back of my hand. Yeah, so. so just casually you played it like 30 times. Yeah, exactly. Is that an exaggeration or you literally played no, it? No, I, I really did. I, I played this game a lot, okay. I'll admit. So, and then you took about three chances to do 102%. Right. And do you remember the time off the top of your head? Yeah, the time that I got Nintendo Power was an hour and 53 minutes to <laughs> totally complete the game with every DK coin and everything, every bonus level done, everything complete in the game. So was an it? hour and 53 minutes, about the average time of a movie, and you beat this entire game. Do you remember off the top of your head how many stages or worlds there are in this game? Uh, not in particular. There's probably like six or seven different worlds with many worlds, in, probably five or six with each world, but... Uh, it's yeah, it's about that, but the game takes very long to beat normally. So yeah, I'm very proud of what I did. This is definitely one Honestly. of those games that it just there's a lot of collectibles. And if you've never played this game, um, the stages, unlike say something like Sonic the Hedgehog, the stages in this have a lot of variance in the ways you actually play it. Right. Would you agree with that? Right. Like I'm, you know, there's the minecart level, there's the underwater level, mm -hmm. there's that level with all the crazy bees. So. Um, Nintendo Power, you said you're top 10. I looked it up. I found it. It's going to be on the screen right about now. I found the issue you were in. You got 7th <laughs> place with a time of 1 hour 53 minutes. And there's like a laundry list of people underneath you. And you're definitely at the top of the leaderboard. Absolutely. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. that. <laughs> My, uh, I have a question. Uh, like, how was it? How, did you have to like video record with a camcorder yourself no, what's playing funny it? Is back then is I actually took a Polaroid. <laughs> Oh. I mean, there's no uh, way I could Photoshop uh, the score back then. I could right. only take a picture of it and actually send in the physical photo. Because oh, so, it has the time you beat it at yeah, the Right. You have to make sure it's clear enough. They said, make sure it's clear <clears> enough <throat> when you take the picture when you send it in. Because we couldn't email it back then. Right. Because right. the internet was... In take a picture, get it developed, put it in an envelope. Yep. The yeah, old school way. Send it off, and then who knows? Yeah, it might <laughs> like, get lost in the mail. You're right. Yeah, thank <laughs> God it didn't. Like you might like what, imagine if like you knew you had a time of one hour and fifty three minutes, and then in Nintendo Power you did not see your name or your time. Yeah, I'll be very upset. It <laughs> would probably be... ruin my life. <laughs> now, like I said, I found the issue of Nintendo Power in which your name appears. It's uh, do you remember what issue number was? I think you said eighty um, four. Well, I just know it was the May nineteen ninety six issue with uh, Ken, Ken Griffey Jr. on the front. Awesome. <laughs> do you happen to remember how many issues in between the if the challenge was issued versus how long you had to wait until seeing your name? Oh, uh, it was probably a couple months. I'd say three or four months. So it, three so or it, four months as a ten year old yeah. is a lifetime. Oh, right, it was. It was unbearable. And was there any word like, "Hey, you're in the top ten. Check it out," or was it just like? Actually, Pick yeah, they did. Check. They sent me um, Nintendo Power had something back then, a catalog where you could buy like T-shirts and plush toys yes. and all things that we would love now. See, things you see at Hot Topic, For, but yeah. they the prize was actually pretty weak. They give you four power stamps, which equates to four dollars off anything in the catalog. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, I'm halfway to a uh, a toy. Right, <laughs> I can almost get that Mario plush toy. I need to save up four more dollars with my non job as a. A ten-year-old, you know, the one of the top ten in the world. I know they didn't Here's respect me. Four fake dollars. Well, guess what? Nintendo Power's out of business now, so right. 
Yeah, they they got what's coming to them. Were you a uh, <laughs> were you like a relig- regular reader? Like, uh, oh yeah, I, used, I, I loved... subscribed to it since like third year it was out. Right. I, I had so many issues. I remember maybe ten or so years ago, I went over to your house and you still had a bunch of back issues. Oh, I still have them now. Yeah, I wish I kept my Nintendo powers. But thankfully, you could download them online, yes. which is a lot easier, and they'll never actually believe degrade. it or not. Uh, it did take me a little while to find that issue. Oh, it did. And then the website I had that I found it on was really goofy and it was hard to navigate, but. You know, that's the struggle. Yeah, I definitely made sure I kept that issue. Yeah. But so, I, I pretty much have all of them. <laughs> I thought uh, now might be a good time to pivot to talk about um, speedrunning in general. Because what, you're, what you did as a child, even before the community was a thing, is you speedran this game. And mm-hmm. so speedrunning, if you're not familiar, is the practice of beating a video game as quickly as possible without using overt cheats. So, like, you can't use Game Genie. You can't... Uh. Can't, yeah. <laughs> can't use a game shark. You can't put in cheat codes. But what you can do is use glitches. And so uh, a really good game to talk about speedruns with is uh, Super Mario 64. I was talking about this today with a co-worker of mine. Uh, Super Mario 64 is the first speedrunning game I ever saw somebody speedrun on the internet. Same. And it is unbelievable what people can do in that game. But uh, anyway, so in Super Mario 64, you, there's no cheat codes. There's no game shark, whatever. Um, but people can beat that game ridiculously fast. Right now, the current world record for getting all 120 stars is an hour, 40 minutes, and 10 seconds. Wow. That's sick. I've been playing it for months. <laughs> I'm not even close. And so, um, in a game like Donkey Kong Country 2, like I said, no cheats. But uh, I believe in this game that um, a certain speedrunning category is called any percent and that just means beat the game as quickly as possible whereas Mm. what brian did as a youngster was 102 percent which is full completion full completion so for the any percent runs they're allowed to use glitches so what they do is they manipulate the game in order to warp to different levels that they're not supposed to do um another good example of that would be uh there is a uh, glitch in super mario world where if you go into the very first stage where you can actually physically control mario in super mario world and you manipulate the items in a very precise but incredibly difficult manner, uh, you can immediately warp to the credits. What? Wow. And it's something crazy like, I'll, link, I'll put a link to this in the below the video in the YouTube description, but it's something like um, you have to like hit a certain number of shells and line up those shells in a certain order, hit a certain enemy, <laughs> and that's then ridiculous. do some other things. And you meet. But anyway, so that's just the illustration that um, I want to get to, uh, that in speedrunning there's different categories. So in this game, Donkey Kong Country, there's any percent, which is just beat the game, and there's 102 percent, which is what Brian did. Now, yeah. uh, here's the point I really wanted to get to. On we're recording this video on March 21st, on, 2017. 2017. On the website for the that um, tracks the world records for Donkey Kong Country one, two, and three speedruns, the uh, current world record for 102 percent is. One hour, 27 minutes, 41 seconds. Okay. Brian's time of one hour and 53 minutes puts him at 21st place in the world, according to that website. Yeah, that's sweet. As a child. As a child, almost 20 years ago. Right. Or over 20 years ago. Sadly, that's unbelievable. Yeah. Dude. <laughs> that actually just goes to show you that even though people are insane and can do these speed runs like really fast, there hasn't actually been that much improvement. Over the game. Correct. I mean, there's only so much you can do, right? Right. Oh, Can I ask a question? Uh, so, now, today, in 2017, if I wanted to get full completion on a game, uh, nine times out of ten, I'm going on the internet, looking up where the secret stuff is. <laughs> now, in 95, that wasn't a thing. You had to, like, what, you could get, like, a strategy guide, right? right? Sometimes Nintendo Power mm-hmm. themselves would publish strategy guides. Yeah, and then, like, the Nintendo Power would have hints and stuff and uh there's certain games that you needed nintendo power to beat which uh, is a thing right yeah uh castlevania 3 uh but did you just play the 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 crap out of this and find everything on your own or did you have some help uh, i might i remember using nintendo power for a few coins like a dk coins yeah and whatnot but for the most part i played each stage so thoroughly that i just knew every stage like, like it was nothing. It right. was just a uh, natural. So, but yeah, it was definitely a lot tougher not having the internet back then. Just looking up where all this stuff is, 
because as a kid you have nothing else to do that's <laughs> you, true you have no that's job true. you could just like that's find a, every seat on every stage and just summer afternoon just spending hours on one stage right finding weird stuff exactly and then showing someone that's not that impressed <laughs> <laughs> exactly but uh Recently, a friend of ours named Bill let me borrow uh, Donkey Kong Country 1 and 2 on for Super Nintendo. And I was like, great, I'm going to beat these. I did not come close no, to these games are incredibly the first hard. This, like, what, you've made this look so easy, like it's a <laughs> demo mode. You're just, you're talking and you're just flowing through this. It's very impressive. But these games are incredibly difficult. They are. And, uh... Oh, no. They're also like, go. Th- would you, were you, uh, as a kid, you were a Nintendo all the way? D- d- I know, Harry, you were Sega? Uh, yeah, I was Sega. But uh, Brian, you were uh, Nintendo. Oh, uh, I always was a loyal Nintendo guy. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Harrison had Genesis, and uh, I had Nintendo and Super Nintendo. So we had the best of both worlds. Right, you had it all. Up. Yeah, <laughs> very spoiled. We're, uh, <laughs> we're only, like, what, a year and a half apart, so... Yeah. We were always hanging out as kids, enjoying the fruits of each other's consoles. That's right, right. right. Um, still playing them 32 years later for me. Still fun. <laughs> still yeah. fun. Speaking of consoles, uh, you might think we're playing this on the Super Nintendo. Oh, yes. This is a whole other fucking thing to talk about. <laughs> uh, real quick, though. Any questions about speedrunning? I don't claim to be an expert, but it is something I have. A, I love watching speedruns, and I watch them all the time just in my free time. But uh, So if you're watching this video, you have any other questions, uh, just hit us up, and I'll try to guide you to like what the best places to watch speedruns are or whatever. Um, but yeah, so you might think we're watching this, Brian play this on a Super Nintendo, but we're, he's not. He's playing this on a little Raspberry Pi console. That I am. And uh, we're going to have a picture on the screen for that right now. Uh, Brian, you did something interesting. You put a Raspberry Pi computer inside a Nintendo cartridge. Yes, I did, and it's amazing. I love it. So, a uh, Raspberry Pi, if you don't know, is a small little computer. It's about the size of a credit card. It's not small. There's a couple different versions of them. And a lot of people use them to create retro consoles where you can just load them up with emulators and literally every game for every system from, like, NES to... Super Ni- or to Atari's on there. Genesis, 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 Genesis Nintendo. Game Boy? Nintendo 64. Mm. The more advanced versions of the Raspberry Pi, the ones that have a little bit more horsepower in them, you can run arcade emulators on them. Uh, so, Brian, why did you decide to build a um, Raspberry Pi console? Well, as a lot of people were excited for the NES Classic that came out in November, I went there the first day to GameStop, and... I, there's about 20 people in line. Like, what? I know there's other people that wanted this besides me. <laughs> right, like, what right. The, what the heck? So, obviously, I didn't get the NES Classic, and I checked Google every day for if there was an in stock report for a NES Classic. Even after the holidays, there's nowhere to be found. Are they so, still gone? Yeah, I even went <laughs> yesterday. It, it, today is March 20th, I think. 21st. Yeah, 21st. 21st. And I still can't find one. It's ridiculous. Almost four months after they released it, there's still no NES Classics in stores, so I'm like, you know what? I'm going to just build my own. I'm going to put 10 times as many games as what the NES Classic has, which only has 30 games. And, that's and I loaded this up with about 250 Super Nintendo games, 170 Nintendo games. Pretty much any game I would play, I put on here. Any game I'm remotely interested or ever owned, I, I put on here. So it just it's that much better than the NES Classic. And hey, they missed out. I could have spent $60 on the, the NES Classic and... They're still not in stores for people to buy. So, so it's, right, you know. that's unbelievable. So let me ask, comparing price points, um, NES Classic, sixty dollars, uh, start to finish. How much money did you put into your Raspberry Pi console? I would say roughly about seventy dollars. But and that does now does that also include the controller you're using? Yeah, that's absolutely everything. Okay, so for ten dollars more than the NES Classic, you have a console that can run any old school video game console. Right, mm-hmm. and I have yeah ten times as many games as the NES Classic would have. And on a scale from 1 to 10, 1 being ridiculously easy that a <laughs> kindergartner can do it, and 10 being you need a engineering degree, oh, how shoot. hard was it to Damn. set up a Raspberry uh, Pi console, including building and installing all the games? Well, the, the site I found it gave very clear instructions. Like, I've never built anything like this before. I never had a Raspberry Pi. So I think in terms of 1 being ridiculously easy and 10 being hard, I would say it's like a 4. I mean, you still need to super glue the the motherboard down to the nes or the cartridge you have to cut apart there's a little 
a piece of plastic in the NES cartridge you have to take out for the um, motherboard, the Raspberry Pi, to sit flush. And uh, you just got to pray that everything, you got to really smush down the cables <laughs> <laughs> for it to full fit in there. It, it's really tight, but obviously the, this is working, so I didn't destroy the innards too bad. Right. <laughs> and uh, just but, to be clear, you didn't destroy a legit Super Mario 3 console. Cartridge. Or a cartridge, yeah. I, I went to the King of Prussia Mall, or even there's a place in Drexel Hill near me. Um, it's called Game and DVD Exchange. How is that place? Oh, it's it's awesome. Is they it? have a bunch of Blu-rays. They have really oh, cheap real? games. Oh, yeah, it's really cool. I went there for the first time the other day, and they actually give you more money than GameStop would. They give you, they they sell on average fifty percent more than GameStop will give you for like a trade-in, That's because GameStop for, rips you off. For yeah. new games, you mean? Yeah, for new games, okay. right? But uh. Yeah, I pretty much bought a cartridge from the mall. I, I didn't know about the game and DVD exchange place. I bought a cartridge, and it was just some, like, generic golf game. For yeah, Nintendo. that there's a hundred of. Right? Yeah, You're it's like, like, oh, they got NES games. Uh, 90 of them are <laughs> golf. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I just grabbed one of them, because I know if I would buy, like, a Mario 3 cartridge, it'd be at least 20, 30 bucks, just because that's what the, you know, because it's a great game and everything. Mm. But uh, I just bought a sticker o- offline and just put it over the... The old golf NES cartridge that way it gives the illusion that it's a Mario three NES game when it's it's definitely not. <laughs> right, unbelievably portable. It's tiny. Yeah, you yeah, it's can... very cool. Uh, this is uh, what a world we live in, huh? <laughs> it's, it's yeah, it's it's really cool. And, and like you I... went. I'm sorry, but I was just saying you went like and you made a nice looking NES cartridge Raspberry Pi and spent seventy bucks. Like, yep, you can do it. I feel like for much cheaper if you just want to be, yeah, you know, if you're just dirty. I think well, oh, so. Oh, a Raspberry Pi, the the model that Brian used is called Pi Zero, correct? Right, Pi Zero. It's the smallest one they had, and it was and actually only five dollars <laughs> at Micro Center. It's like the tiny. It's like yeah, like the size of a credit card. Like you said, it's ridiculously small. So the Pi Zero is five bucks. The Pi Three, which has more horsepower in it, is about thirty five bucks. Right. So then on Amazon or Newegg or Micro Center or wherever you want to go, a lot of times they sell kits that come with like a case and that little case just makes it the size of like maybe a cell phone mm-hmm. and so it doesn't look like an nes cartridge but it's a case it protects the actual motherboard and the circuits and whatnot and you can get that for pretty cheap you probably spend maybe i don't know 35 for the raspberry pi plus an additional 20 for the kit with the case mm-hmm. and then you have a retro console mm-hmm. i've even seen people um you know frustrated like brian who couldn't get an nes classic 3d print an NES case and shove a Raspberry Pi inside. <laughs> yeah, that's a little yeah. too much for me. I yeah. <laughs> I won't go to those links. <laughs> that's a, that's a, no, that's hard. You actually have to buy a 3D printer, or well, hope you have know someone that has it. A lot of public libraries are starting to carry 3D printers, and you can just bring in 3D printer um, files and have give them the files, and they'll print it for you. Really? Wow. Yes. Yeah. Oh, this guy says. I or if you know more... certain family members uh, who have 3D printers. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, the Raspberry Pi is just, it's an unbelievable little device. Um, right now, you just have one controller uh, hooked up to it, but you can have two controllers, right? Mm-hmm. I love the buttons on this controller. It looks yeah, like, the, that's uh, like the Famicom look, right? The well, colored uh, buttons. Brian bought yeah. a USB controller, so it connects to USB, but it's shaped and looks exactly like a Super Nintendo controller. Yeah, they make uh, S- like Super Nintendo rip-off controllers that are very nice. Oh, yeah. That uh, feel really good. They yeah. also make ones for like Genesis and Nintendo, and I've even seen USB and 64 controllers. Mm-hmm. These pirates do it all. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a wonderful world we live in. We get all <laughs> that stuff. I remember, uh, yeah, oh. in the in recent history, uh, the thing would be like something that you plug in. To your TV directly with AV cables that had like 30 games. Yeah, on the it. ones they sell at the kiosks. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I um I had one of those, but it wasn't for like NES or Genesis. It was just for Atari games, and so it looked like a little Atari joystick controller. Yeah, yeah. And it had the one single Atari button on it, because that's how those controllers used to be. It used to be a joystick with just one button, and then it hooked in via AV cables, and it was pretty much garbage. Yeah. Seems like it. Yeah. So. Uh, Brian, anything else you want to say about Donkey Kong Country or your experience with speedrunning it or uh, well, memories I will about say, uh, power? Watching Twitch and how good everybody is nowadays, it's like, you know, if you have a job and you're an adult, it's really going to be <laughs> very difficult to be the best in the world unless you're, I'd recommend starting young 
because when you get older, it's gonna be a lot harder to <laughs> attain these world record results. Absolutely. So start early, kids, and uh, keep playing. Okay. Well, and... What's this girl's name? Uh, Dixie, Dixie, Dixie Kong. Kong. Dixie Kong. Yeah. Yeah. yeah All right. Cool. Uh, I think we're gonna end the video here. Too. So everybody, thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for watching Brian play. Uh, I'll, maybe I'll put up the or a link or something so you can really look at that scan of the Nintendo Power and uh, catch us next time please listen to Doom Thugs at DoomThugs.com please listen to I've Made a Huge Mistake at HugeMistakePod.com and we will see you next time All right. bye guys thanks for having me guys thanks for being here this is fun before this video ends, just want to mention something really quick. Brian was far too modest to mention that he has his own video and photography studio. He does birthday parties, weddings, high school reunions, anything you can think of. He's good people. He does good work. Hit him up if you need his services. Uh, you can find the link below.